This is the second uh, tutorial in a series about how to play bebop piano and in this video I'm going to talk about combining arpeggios with the bebop scale that I talked about uh, in lesson one, the dominant bebop scale. So I'm going to use a G7 chord in this video. In, in the first one I used a, a C7 in the key of F major. This time I'm going to use the dominant 7th in the key of C major, which is G7. And I'm going to extract three arpeggios from that. With the left hand I'm just going to play the root and the 7th. And in the right hand I'm going to play an arpeggio starting on the 3rd of G7 going to the 5th, to the 7th, and then the ninth. Now, if you look at those notes on their own, you could think of that as chord 7 in the key of C major. It's a B half diminished, or B minor 7 with a flattened 5th. Or, as I say, you can think of it in terms of what those notes are in terms of the G7 chord. That is 3rd, 5th, 7th, and ninth. The second arpeggio I'm going to use is starting on the 5th of the G7 chord. So looking at those notes and thinking in terms of G7, we've got the 5th, the 7th, the 9th and the 11th. But on their own, we can just think of that as a D minor 7 chord, which of course is chord 2, which usually precedes chord 5 uh, in, in a 2-5-1 progression. So that's the second arpeggio. And then the third one is starting on the seventh of G7, the F. So that's the seventh, the ninth, the eleventh, and the thirteenth. That's a really colourful one because we've got three upper extensions, the ninth, the eleventh, and the thirteenth. Again, looking at those notes on their own, that's just an F major 7. It's chord 4 in the key of C. So whichever way you think of it, it works. So what I'm going to do first is do patterns where I play four eighth notes going up an arpeggio and then four more eighth notes coming down the dominant bebop scale. So first one starting on the third of the G7 chord and then down the scale. I'm going to do the same pattern, but starting on the 5th of the G7 chord. So it's up the arpeggio, down the, the uh, bebop scale, and then starting on the 7th. By the way, you might notice I'm accenting the top note of the arpeggio every time. really helps it to swing. You can then of course combine all those three, just make one long continuous pattern. Which is what I played at the beginning only in double time. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is reverse this and play a, a descending scale pattern followed by an ascending arpeggio. So I'm going to start on the uh, seventh of G7, down the scale so that I land on the third and then go back up with the arpeggio. Again, accent that top note of the arpeggio. Okay, so I'm now going to start on the root of G7, come down the bebop scale, and go up the arpeggio starting on the fifth. Think of that, remember, as a D minor seven chord. And now I'm going to start on the third of G7, come down the scale, and up the arpeggio. The one that's uh, it's like an F major seven chord, basically. Okay, another thing that's uh, a rhythm that's commonly used in jazz is to um, start with a quaver rest and then move the first note of the arpeggio onto the, uh, the second quaver and then make the next three quavers into a triplet. So it sounds like this. You'll hear 
hear that rhythm ever such a lot in jazz. Okay, once again, experiment with this. Try it in all keys, of course, and try coming up with other patterns. Combine them in, in various ways. Again, the, the sky's the limit. There's endless possibilities. And, of course, don't forget that as well as playing them in, in eighth notes, quavers, you can do it in double time, semi-quavers, like I did at the beginning. <laughs> Okay, hope you found that useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.